Hello, so this week we're going to explore the ASX listing or the IPO, the Initial Public Offering Process. Essentially, what I want to do is start with a really high level overview of what an IPO is, what a stock exchange is, and then we'll look at some of the legal issues that come up. In particular, we'll focus on the prospectus and the role that it plays in any IPO, as well as thinking about ongoing requirements for listed companies, as these will be super relevant when we move into the next phase when we start to talk about public transactions, takeovers and schemes of arrangement in particular. So there are lots of benefits to being an ASX listed company, in particular access to capital. When a company is listed, we can immediately see how the market values that company. And it's quite easy for people to buy and sell shares in the particular company, but also for the company to raise capital by issuing new shares. Um, Clearly, being a listed company provides a certain cachet to companies. So when they're doing business, it signals to their suppliers and to their customers that they're in for the long haul, that they have met the requirements to be a sufficiently large company to be on the stock exchange. Liquidity is also really helpful as owners want to depart the business over time time. And liquidity can also accelerate growth and the expansion of the company generally. There are some negatives to being a listed company though, including increased regulatory and reporting requirements, costs, the potential impact on a company's decision-making processes. They can't be quite as nimble. They need to be disclosing a lot more to the market. And these in turn can also impact long-term growth and profitability. But before we get too much into that, I want to make sure we're all on the same page. So I want to talk about what a stock market is and why it matters. So the photo on this uh, slide actually is a plant for the um, stock, the the London stock market. And you can see that its starting date was back in the 13th century. Stock markets have been around for a really long time. And initially they were places, physical places, where people went to buy and and sell initially stock, like literally sheep and cows, but then shares or stock in companies. So it really was a big marketplace, but instead of trading food and clothes, initially did start with with animals, but now stock market, modern stock markets are a place where people can trade shares and the shares themselves represent ownership in the company. So if a company wants to raise money to grow or to invest in its business, to buy another business, it can go public by offering shares of the company to the public through a process that's called the initial public offering, the IPO. Once a company is listed on a stock market, its shares can be bought and sold by anybody. I mean, they have to use brokers, they have to have an account, and they're, but ultimately these days it's all happening online anyway. So the broking process actually goes through software processes. Initially, stock exchanges were owned by the brokers, but interestingly, many stock markets around the world, including the Australian Stock Exchange or ASX, are actually listed companies themselves. They're really technology companies in many ways these days. So let's think about how a stock market works. Firstly, companies list their shares. So essentially, a company needs to be admitted to the official list of the stock exchange, which actually requires it to sign a contract with the stock exchange where it, the stock exchange agrees to quote its securities. So essentially, the process involves the the company putting together a prospectus, offering its shares for sale on the condition that the sale of that initial lot of stock that is being sold in the IPO is conditional on the company being admitted to the official list and its shares, the shares that are being offered being quoted on the stock exchange. Once those shares are actually quoted, then investors can buy and sell shares through the stock market. 
So if you think a company is going to grow and its shares are going to become more valuable, you might buy shares now to sell them at a higher price later and make a profit. On the other hand, if a company doesn't perform well, the prices of its share can fall, leading to a loss if they get sold uh, at a price that is lower than the price that you paid for them. Similarly, when we add up all of the shares that are on issue and multiply them by the stock price or the share price, we can get a valuation of the company itself. So prices of shares go up and down based on supply and demand. If more people want to buy a share than sell it, then the price will go up. And if more people want to sell than buy, then the price is going to go down. So, you know, it's basically a regular market. Now, many companies will pay dividends. So in other words, they're going to take part of their profit. It's usually not all of their profit, but because they will want to reinvest some of that profit back in the business, but they'll pay part of their profits to shareholders in the form of dividend. So shareholders will make money in this way without necessarily selling their shares at all. So shareholders look at investments on stock exchange both from a capital growth perspective but also from an income profit and loss perspective. So stock exchanges play a really important role in the economy. They help companies raise capital and that capital can be used for a range of things including investing in new projects, growing businesses, or even buying other companies listed or otherwise on a stock exchange. Uh, Secondly, they offer a way for investors to make money effectively or to make investments, small investments across a range of different industries perhaps, or even if they focus on one industry, a range of different companies, um, and provide for disclosure and information about those companies to be shared in such a way that makes trading fair. Um, And stock exchanges often act as an economic indicator. If you think about it, you watch the news, Alan Kohler is there with his graphs. The performance of a stock market reflects how well companies and sometimes even the overall economy is operating. Now, the Australian Stock Exchange, or ASX, is actually not the only market in Australia. Now, we're going to focus on ASX because it's certainly the biggest and it's the one that you're most likely to be dealing with if you are practicing in an M&A area. So what is the Australian Stock Exchange? It's the primary, the largest stock exchange in Australia. It's a fully integrated exchange. It provides listing, trading, clearing, settlement services, um, goes across a wide range of asset classes, including equities, derivatives, commodities, fixed income securities. So it's not just a stock exchange, it's also a derivatives exchange. Um, Companies that list on the ASX Uh, do so to raise capital through the issue of shares, and those shares can be traded by investors. It also offers a derivatives market, so options, futures, and swaps. Um, It provides clearing and settlement, so ASX Clear and ASX Settlement. So they together provide post-trade services for equities and derivatives. And they also manage several important indices, so the ASX 100, the ASX 200, and these are benchmark indexes for Australian equity markets. But the others you might be aware of at GX, it's recently been rebranded to Seboe, that's C. B-O-E, I'm not really sure how to say it, to be perfectly frank. That's an alternative stock exchange. It competes with the ASX. It's a fully licensed stock exchange in Australia. So stock exchanges need to be licensed under the Corporations Act. And I'm going to want to call it GX because that's how I think of it. But Saboe or Kaboe, it's fully licensed. It provides additional platform for the trading of Australian equities, exchange traded funds and other types of securities. It operates slightly differently as to timing and basically it sits alongside ASX and offers alternative trading and liquidity pools for companies that are listed or whose stock or shares are available on it. Others include the National Stock Exchange, the NSX. Again, licensed, it focuses on small and medium-sized enterprises and provides an alternative platform for capital raising and for listing securities. As I said, it specialises in smaller, growth-oriented companies and essentially offers a pathway 
to the ASX and it's often used by regional businesses and niche industries. There's also still a Sydney Stock Exchange. The ASX was originally created as the merger of a range of stock exchanges around Australia, each of whom were originally owned by broking houses. But we've got a uh, Sydney Stock Exchange has kind of been reborn. It's a relatively small, but again, fully licensed exchange. It focuses on emerging companies, particularly those in the Asian Pacific region, and it provides listing opportunities for Australian and international companies. Focuses on technology, real estate, resources, and healthcare, promotes cross border capital flows between Australia and the rest of Asia, and it appears to be appealing to companies that are seeking both Australian and international investors. They're the only ones having the slide. There's also the Australian Securities Dealers Association, the Australian Financial Markets Association, the Australian Energy Market Operator. Now, these aren't stock exchanges as much, but they operate in similar ways. So all of these provide vital services relating to financial markets um, and energy markets, but financial markets is what we're most interested in. And they play a critical role in facilitating capital raising liquidity and the provide opportunities for the trading of a wide range of financial instruments. It's also worth noting that the ASX, which, as I mentioned before, it was a merger of a whole lot of exchanges that were operating around Australia to form the Australian uh, Securities Exchange, uh, the ASX. But it's also, originally it was owned by brokers, but now it's both a listed company and a market operator. So that provides it with a kind of unique situation. As a listed company, it has to comply with the same rules and regulations as other publicly listed entities on the exchange. But at the same time, as a market operator, it's responsible for ensuring that listed companies, including itself, adhere to the regulatory frameworks that govern the Australian securities market. So how does the ASX regulate itself? Clearly, there's potential for a conflict of interest here, but it manages that through a combination of external regulatory oversight, internal government structures, governance structures, and regulatory functions that are separate from its business operations. So what's probably most important here is to understand that there's external oversight by ASIC, the Australian Securities Investment Commission. So as the national corporate regulator, ASIC plays a a really important role in overseeing the ASX operations. ASIC is responsible for ensuring that the ASX complies with its regulatory responsibilities under the Act, under the Corporations Act, and that it operates in the interests of market fairness and transparency. So ASIC supervises the ASX activities to ensure that the exchange is run according to its obligations as a licensed market operator. And this includes overseeing how the ASX enforces compliance with the listing rules and other regulation. ASIC also conducts regular monitoring and reviews of ASX's performance in enforcing the listing rules and managing market operations. And if ASIC identifies concerns or deficiencies, it can take corrective action, including penalties and investigations. So ASX has also established clear governance frameworks to ensure that its regulatory responsibilities are separate from its commercial business operations. So these are the internal governance and structural separation points. ASX has an internal compliance team that monitors and ensures that the exchange as a listed company follows its own listing rules, the disclosure obligations and governance requirements. So the compliance team is responsible for enforcing ASX's listed obligations in the same way that it does for other entities. It also has this structural separation. So it, it separates out its regulatory functions and its commercial activities. And the idea behind this is that it should ensure that the teams who are responsible for regulating the market operate completely independently from those who are involved in its commercial business as a listed company. So the team responsible for listed compliance ensures that all listed companies, including the ASX, meet their obligations under the listing rules. And then there's a separate commercial team that handles the ASX's business activities, so managing share price, profitability, and shareholder relations, for example. 
Um, there's also a an ASX market regulation division that's responsible for market supervision. Uh, so it focuses on the oversight of listed entities and market participants. And the division operates independently within the ASX structure to ensure impartiality when enforcing the rules. There's also a self-regulation and conflict management approach. ASX is clearly, it's responsible for its own listing rule compliance and is subject to the enforcement and penalties for non-compliance, just like any other listed company. So that means if ASX fails to meet any of its disclosure obligations, so failing to disclose a materially price-sensitive piece of information, for example, it can face penalties or corrective actions, just like any other company. And it can't exempt itself from complying with its own rules. Any potential conflicts of interest ha- are basically are handled through the an independent structure of the market regulation division and, of course, ASIC's oversight. And then at the end, it's also worth being aware that the minister, so the treasurer or the minister for financial services, have certain reserve powers. And the minister can step in to impose conditions on the ASX market operator license or even revoke it if necessary to ensure that the ASX doesn't abuse its regulatory role or act against market interest. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about IPOs more generally. In the meantime, questions, concerns, frustrations, please don't hesitate to share them with me.